Grace and peace to you and good morning. I'll give you a little time to get logged on this morning and to greet one another on Facebook. Announcements that I have for us this week will be on April 24th is a baby shower for Hannah Dawson and Brad. It will be in our back parking lot and um, it will be a stay in your car event. So you will drive around and get to wave and smile and take pictures and give gifts, um, but you will not get out of your car. That information can be found on the email, the FPC happenings. Also, session will be talking this Monday morning or Monday evening about reopening for in-person worship and in-person groups and what that looks like and when is it safe and dates and all of those things. If you have thoughts or opinions that you want to share with the session, please reach out to an elder before Monday night's meeting and they will be able to share your thoughts. I am sure there are more announcements that I am not remembering. Uh, be sure to check your FPC happenings. That will have all the information that you need. With that, let us worship God.
Please join me in our call to worship as it is printed in your bulletin. The bread of life opens our eyes. The word of life opens our ears. The risen one shows us God's own brokenness. And by those wounds, we are healed. Peace be with you. And also with you. Friends, the one who calls us to repent hears us in trust that our Creator already knows our deepest thoughts and secrets. Let us open our hearts by sharing our prayer of confession and relying on God's forgiveness. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are creatures of dust, ignorant of your revelation, misunderstanding your life, death, and resurrection among us, needing forgiveness. We repent of our failures to give as you have given to us. We beg your mercy for our fallen world. We seek your word, that we may live with the faith of Jesus. Be our solace in this life and always. We ask this as your own children, holy and incomplete. Forgive us and lead us. Amen. In the name of God, who is Father and Mother, Son and Spirit, our plea for forgiveness has been heard. Friends, God's promises are sure. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us sing in joy using hymn number 457, I greet thee, who my sure Redeemer art.
Please pray with me. Holy God, by your Spirit, reveal to us your radical, surprising love. Come to us, speak to us through your holy word, that we may hear what you are saying to us. Amen. Friends, our first scripture lesson this morning comes, is the entirety of Psalm 4. Listen now for a word from God. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? Selah. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for God's self. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Selah. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me to lie down in safety. Our second lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b through 48. Let us listen. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving, and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Friends, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. These words of greeting are used at Easter. We are sharing the joy that we feel at the good news. We used those words this year, just like they were used thousands of years ago. 
But as we celebrated our second Easter in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, these words felt different. We worship together, but apart. We put flowers on the cross and took pictures. We hosted an Easter egg hunt. But our celebrations were far from our normal traditions. Perhaps this year allowed us to better understand the emotions of the original disciples. The men were gathered in Jerusalem, but the women, the women had gone to the tomb. And when they found it empty, except for two men in dazzling clothes, they took the news that Jesus was risen back to the people in Jerusalem. Their terror turned to joy. But when they went and shared their news with the men, their words were dismissed as an idle tale. Likely their joy turned to anger. But Peter was intrigued enough that he ran to the tomb to see for himself. And then he too was amazed at what had happened. And so the disciples gathered in Jerusalem, they were full of emotions. They were joyful and angry, amazed and doubtful. Two of them took the road toward Emmaus. And they had what is now a well-known encounter with the risen Christ. Like the women, they too returned to Jerusalem to tell the others what they knew. And that is where today's scripture lesson begins. It was evening, probably dark already, on that first resurrection day. It had been three long days, days full of trauma, of terror, of grief, of disbelief. And then Jesus appeared among them and offered them peace and proof, proof to counter their fear and their doubt. Humans always like to have proof. It is said that a picture paints a thousand words. Is there an equivalent pearl of wisdom for proving something? Remember the taunts from the playground as a child? My dad is stronger than your dad. Oh yeah, prove it. I have a hundred dollars. Prove it. We're going to get a swimming pool and you're not invited. Prove it. It's human nature to doubt and to look for proof. Just like feeling emotions and memories and gathering information from a picture, we often look for proof to assuage our doubts. Jesus offered the disciples proof of his resurrection. He appeared before them and he offered his hands and his feet for them to touch and to see because ghosts do not have flesh and bones. And then in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. 
It's a line from scripture. In their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. And Jesus asked for food and ate it among them. There's a long scriptural tradition of people eating to prove their reality. Jairus's daughter was thought dead, but Jesus took her by the hand and called to her to get up and then directed the others in the room, her parents and the disciples, to give her something to eat. Abraham and Sarah fed a meal to the Lord and angels near those oaks of Mamre. And don't forget the story that immediately precedes the scripture lesson for today. When disciples were walking along the road and a stranger appeared among them, and it was only in the breaking of the bread, the sharing of a meal, that he was revealed to be Jesus. What proof do you need to believe the good news of the resurrection? It has been a long, hard 13, 14 months of pandemic. 164 people in Clay County have died. 9,101 people in Missouri have died. 569,556 people have died in the U.S. And worldwide death counts are inaccurate and underreported, but remain staggering. What proof do we need to believe in the resurrection? How do we lean into the truth of resurrection in the face of so many lives lost? Can we, like those original disciples, disbelieve in joy? The relief that many people feel when they receive a COVID vaccine shot is being well documented. Social media is full of smiling people taking selfies with their vaccine cards. Some people are bursting into tears of relief when they get their shot. Others find that their tension melts away. For many, getting jabbed sets them free from their fears. I wonder, can that be proof of resurrection? Plot lines from books and movies often involve characters moving into or out of a story. Whether it involves entering into a book or a wormhole or another dimension, the idea of entering into another story that is already in progress, it's a common theme. Words from those stories come alive and offer proof to the characters that their understanding is not the only one. Maybe the prevalence of these plots can offer proof to us that we have entered into another real story. Jesus was dead and is now alive. We join those disciples in joyful disbelief. Proof for us may come in the elements we share at communion. Those elements that unite us with people all over the world and across time and space as we share.
the presence of the living Christ in the breaking of bread and the pouring of juice. We doubt and we believe. And we grieve in disbelieving joy. As we look at the proof that God provides, but we do not stay there. Jesus does not leave us where we are. Instead, the disciples then and now are commissioned and sent out to proclaim repentance and forgiveness. And they proclaim that repentance and that forgiveness to all nations in Jesus' name. Friends, you have been commissioned with all of your doubts, with all of your desires for proof, with your joyful disbelief. You are being sent out, commissioned, to proclaim repentance and forgiveness. The Greek word, dianoigo, it means to open. It's used in our passage for today. On the Emmaus road, Jesus dianoigo, he opened the scriptures to them. In verse 45 of today's lesson, Jesus again, dianoigo. It says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. These openings are rightly understood only in the light of Jesus' death and resurrection. Our minds have been opened. Proof has been given. We have been commissioned. And all of this is held in the light of resurrection. Our rough year does not diminish the reality of this story. The story that we have joined already in progress. Friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Friends, with Christ Jesus, let us pray.
for the needs of the world. Holy One, as the risen Christ opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures and gave them the power through the Holy Spirit to walk boldly in this world, open your people today to the healing wisdom and faith given in your word. Prince of Peace, as Christ Jesus showed his wounded hands and feet to the terrified disciples, reveal to your church and to people of prayer in every faith the wounds of our neighbors, the fears of individuals and families, and the avenues towards healing. Author of life, we beg for peace among nations, peace throughout communities, peace within families. Guide leaders and voters, legislatures and parliaments, judges and juries. Teach diplomacy and let our ways be formed so that all creatures, plants and people, may have plenty. Light in our darkness. Let your brightness burn in places shrouded in violence. Reveal the pains that are hidden in secret. Unveil the needs of our own hearts so that we may know the power of vulnerability. Your son was raised to life even from the grave. Show us again that life comes from death. Healer of our every ill, we pray for all who are in need, for refugees, for all who are displaced, for rescue workers and medical teams, for those whose bones are weary, for those who show us the power of community to give hope to the frightened, and for all who have asked for our prayers. You command us to bring to you the deepest desires of our heart, O oh God. And we pray now for those people and concerns that lie in our hearts. We pray especially for those who are listed in the bulletin. Linda Tustison's sister, Janet, has been moved to hospice care this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your abundant mercy, O oh God, we commend into your care all for whom we pray. We pray using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as Jesus gave himself fully for us and then appeared to the disciples, bringing them peace, so let us bring wholeness and healing to others through our tithes and our gifts. We can make financial offerings at fpcliberty.org or through the mail. We can offer of our time and our talents by serving the world around us. Let us pray. Lord God, all that we have is from your creative hand. 
all that we can give away, we do through Jesus' love. All our renewal comes from the Holy Spirit's wisdom. Deal graciously with our gifts so that others may have joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing hymn number 514. sanctuary full of people. We miss one another. But friends, remember that the word of God assures us what we will be has not yet been revealed. So live with hope. Share your joy. Withhold your anger. Shed your disappointments. Turn to all people with gentleness. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.